الحمد للہ وقفا وسلام علی عباد الدی نصطفا خصوصا علی اشرف الانبیاء والمرسلین وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه وذرياته أجمعين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وكذلك جعلناكم أمة وسطا لتكونوا شهداء على الناس وقال الله تعالى في مقام الآخر إنا جعلناكم شعوبا وكبائل لتعارفوا إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم صدق الله مولانا العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن ولا ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته When someone hates you, dislikes you, dreads you what is the way to react? Well, normal human reaction is you bounce back. You challenge, um, you express your anger, annoyance, and you fight back. And what that does, of course, is it aggravates the whole situation and it leads to further dislike, hatred, resentment. And we know that happens in our lives. Um, and so the Quran te teaches us politeness and courtesy that, you know, when you're amongst yourselves and someone does say something wrong and shows dislike and resentment, you don't react, you don't become angry, but you do well cause mean al ways. okay? You drink your anger. The Quran uses a metaphor, you know, just like you drink water. And the idea is it just flows. Similarly, you should drink your anger away. Don't let it overrule and overtake you. But just imagine, you know, if this is what happens at individual level, what if it becomes the whole country's anger? Everybody's anger or two parties, okay, with thousands, millions of people on each side. What happens then? Well, it's obvious what, what happens. Human history is full of it. Wars happen, okay? Destruction takes place and innocent people are killed and, the, 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 you know, humanity becomes divided and divided. The Quran is a an amazing book that teaches peace. It teaches us how to live peacefully. And I've been actually looking at the 12 terms the Quran uses in dealing with others. So how do you interact with others? You know, and these 12 terms, I, I've, I've chosen them because I think they suggest something very important, something very basic. And it shows you the divine plan for making sure that Muslims don't become competent, don't become arrogant, don't become aggressors, don't become people who are always looking for fight, okay? So they're not belligerent people, but in fact, truly peacemakers. And it's so sad, you know, so, so few of us know these realities and even fewer and particularly scholars very rarely talk about that and yet this is something that we need to be talking because we live in a country of 67 million people. We're, alhamdulillah, 4 million. That's about 5% to 6% possibly. In a country that has a history of, you know, Islamophobia, uh, not only Islamophobia, Semitism, uh, anti-Semitism uh, of 
uh, hatred of the others on a big scale. This has been the, uh, you know, the West has never tolerated others. Uh, it has only, it only believed in this land for being for the Christians. Uh, and uh, this is why they persecuted the Jews uh, bitterly. Uh, and this is a new phenomenon that in the last century, uh, we came to this country uh, and some other people came here as well, okay, other communities. And I grew up in Halifax and in the 60s. And I remember, you know, the teacher could say to you, you stink of curry, and it was accepted. You are Paki. They used to say that, seriously, you know. And this was quite okay. You know, they would just laugh off. That was quite normal, you know. And there were certainly some areas in Halifax where we wouldn't go because we knew we'd get beaten up by, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the Goras there, you know. So that was the, you know, we had that kind of, uh, you know, it was a severe, and of course that is when Enoch Powell made that terrible speech of rivers of blood, and, and in 1968. However, in 1976 when they passed the Race Relations Act, and then began to be, take race relations as very serious, that, you know, these people aren't here just for laborers for a few years, they're going to be here now, we need them. And, and, and uh, you know, there was a sense that they're going to be part of this society, then this new law, uh, you know, made it criminal to be racist. Uh, and although it wasn't working all that well, but it began to take, you know, there was a seriousness about it. Uh, and so I think we have to give credit to this country as well that, you know, they've done amazing uh, work since then. Uh, and now there are certain institutions in, of the state that are working very hard. In, in, in actually uh, rooting out racism, Islamophobia, and hatred of the other. Uh, and it's you know, really important to note that police, the army, uh, the NHS are all working very hard. They've got a long way to go. Schools, colleges, nurseries, universities still have racism in them. L latest report by um, uh, Alison uh, Professor Alison Scott, I worked with her for some time in, in Gloucester University. She did a report on the state of the Muslims and in, in universities, and of course it showed that there is, university students feel, quarter of a million Muslim university students feel that there is racism and, 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 and Islamophobia there as well. So in schools, of course, we know it. Uh, and and uh, so, so they've got a long way to go. And we can actually give you lots of figures, and I've got those statistics, and we're going to do a big conference next Saturday. I'm going to be inviting you all online conference. It's really important, you know, that we talk and we try to understand what this phenomenon is. I believe it can be tackled. I believe it can be actually, uh, you know, rooted out, to be honest, to a large extent. Not <laughs> entirely, but we can do. But the question is, what are we doing about it ourselves? And this is really important, you know, when you heard last week that a very senior politician was, you know, sacked because of her Muslimness. You know, the person who sacked her told her, okay, look, your other members of the cabinet feel uncomfortable with your Muslimness. And if that isn't racism, if that is not Islamophobia, what is Islamophobia then? And so, uh, you know, you, you would tell me, uh, some of you would be thinking, oh, you know, this kind of incident happened about 1400 years ago in Sindh, and Muhammad bin Qasim was told, go and take revenge for it, okay, because a sister has been insulted, okay. I know we don't, we don't, we're not going to have anything like that, but what was sad for me was, I didn't see Muslim organizations or individuals even speaking out against Islamophobia or taking this as an opportunity to raise awareness that we've got to tackle this scourge. And it is a scourge. You know, scourge means a punishment for us and for the wider society. Remember, you know, last week we were talking about when you do something good, you are the first benefactor. When you do something wrong, you are the first person to be hurt. So those who are actually Islamophobes, racist, prejudice, discriminatory, and being unfair, who are they doing it to? First and foremost to themselves, seriously. They are not peaceful people. They themselves are suffering. 
But, you know, I, I'm, I, as a da'i, as an imam, I think our job is very simply to say, look, we can do a lot, but we are not doing almost, I could say we are not doing anything, to be honest. Really, we're not doing much to bring others close to us. So, when you look at the latest research was in July 2021 by Professor Jones of Birmingham University, and he's published his findings. And it's really very sad reading. Read my blog this week's uh, Friday Reflections, and you'll see those uh, very terrible, you know, sort of figures. Nearly one third of the British don't like us. Okay? We are hated three times more than the Jews. Okay? And we are the second most hated community here after the gypsies. Okay? And, and so on and so on. When you, but, but when you look at some of the f figures, what it seems like is there is ignorance. These people are really ignorant. And some of you know that we've been doing the Trust Building Forum for last uh, five years, and a researcher was following us throughout this uh, from Nottingham University, and they've published two papers to show that. You know, when we had a session with 30 or 40 non-Muslims in their workplace, uh, and uh, we talked with them for about 40 minutes about Islam, what happened? The f before and after the session, there was a huge change. They were Islamophobes before, now they said, well, we were wrong. <laughs> so it just shows you a little bit of effort can make that change. But, you know, that, that is showing to us, you know, we can't keep on blaming others, all right? I, I don't want to blame anybody. It's, it's not government's job on the whole. Okay? There is things that government can do and must do, like legislation. But beyond that, to be honest, it's really our job as Muslims <laughs> to go out and make friends and not to make enemies, to tell about us and to remove and bust those myths that are around us. Uh, so, um, so, you know, the, the, the message and the teachings the Quran gives us are that you are supposed to be proactive about yourself. If you are not going to be proactive, if you are not going to reach out to people and you are allowing people to tell stories about you, then you better get ready to suffer, okay? So I hope you can see, you know, the ball is in our court to a large extent, to be honest. But it is a serious issue because, you know, the, the, that research found was uh, that Muslims, people with Muslim names have three times higher chances of being rejected by employers. Three times higher, okay? Three times, okay, that is 300 times more, up, you know, in other words, it's going to be much, much less. It's only going to be one third the possibility that they will get good jobs. So it does really affect you, you know, or it will certainly affect your future generations. And those with sort of Muslim names, Muslim sounding names, are also, again, similarly, um, uh, you know, have poor chances. So it is in our interest that, you know, we really do something about this. But I'll tell you, you know, as I said to you before, we are not the only ones who suffer. The other side suffers even more. Why? Well, when a Muslim worker, and I've heard this from young people, when they go to their work and they're not valued, they don't feel, they're not able to contribute as much as they could, okay? So they are not, they're, they're not realizing their potential their company is not getting what it's supposed to be getting, okay? So there is, you know, the damage, you know, it does to everybody. So Islamophobia is a really very serious issue. We never have considered it that serious, sadly, and I hope, uh, you know, we're going to, I'll talk to you more about the conference, inshallah, later on. So what does the Quran tell us? What should we be looking at? Well, look at this. Allah says, Inna ja'alna kum shu'uban wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu. You know, we made you into different tribes and into different races so that you may know one another. And, in, and, 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 and further on in the next verse, it says that, you know, we created you. Inna khalaqna kum min dhakarin wa unsa. We created you from Adam and Eve. 
In other words, already telling us, you are really brothers and sisters in your humanity. Okay, so it begins from this very positive message of togetherness, of oneness. وَمَا كَانَ النَّاسُ إِلَّا أُمَّةً وَاحِدًا Surah Yunus Allah says that, you know, humanity was really one ummah. They were one, one community. We were one, فَاخْتَلَفُوا Then they became divided. Okay, so, but the idea is there. You know that, listen, we don't need to be looking like the, you know, the uh, KK Klux guys or the right-wing people who don't regard others as part of the humanity, sadly, and somehow re regard them as inferior. We don't have that kind of nonsense. We don't have that kind of uh, wrong attitude against other human beings. We regard them as our brothers and sisters. So, and look at the Christians. How are they addressed in the Quran? Ya Ahlul Kitab. People of the book, okay? And we are told you can eat their food and you can marry their women. You know, to bring and to bridge those, uh, um, 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 you know, gaps there. Yeah, no? So, uh, and then it says, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا We made you the moderate people. A moderate community. You are not extremists, okay? You don't go to the extreme of the right, you don't go to the extreme of the left, okay? You are in the middle, okay? Uh, and you know this whole idea of Ihsan? Last week we were talking about whatever you do for your own sake. Good or bad, it is for your own sake. Hal jazaul ihsan illal ihsan. What is what is the reward of doing favors except goodness. <laughs> what else can there be? That's, it, you know, this is a, you know, very clearly encouraging us, motivating us, that there is only one mission of a true believer, is to do ihsan to others. You know, I know, you know, there is Curlus, is it Curlus Osman, season three, you know, and Atargul, uh, uh, you know, the uh, Osmani great uh, conquerors, you know. Well, I hope we're not in that mood and in that environment and in that age, okay? It's terrible, okay? That is not, I'll tell you, that is not Islamic either. I'll tell you, there is nothing Islamic about it. It is totally un-Islamic, you know, to hate, to fight, and to plot against one another. I'll leave that to the kings and the generals, okay? As an imam sitting on the member of Muhammad sallallahu you know, we have a job, very simple one. Spread peace and love because Muhammad was وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Okay? So I'm not going to, you know, be the politician or, or or, or the general, we are very simply the Imams who are there to spread that message of love, of Rahmah, of goodness, okay? And so, uh, so don't, you know, I, I wouldn't be copying any of that uh, Karlas Usman or I, I think they're going to have another one, uh, you know, of the Fatih who, who conquered the uh, uh, Turkey. I hope you don't, you know, think about uh, too much about it, but, you know, it just shows you uh, where the hatred comes from, the roots of that hatred, okay? It's not based in the deen, it is based in history. It is based uh, on those generals and those empires, okay? And I don't know how many of those empires were Islamic, to be honest. When, who, who can you say, were the Seljuks Islamic? <laughs> were the Turks Islamic? Were, were the Mughals? Kitanabade Islami, you say, eh? Kitanabade Nek Lok say, no? You, you can't, the people who did Dawa, the people who spread Islam, were not these people. It was Khaja Muinuddin Chishti. Yes? It was the great Khaja of Naqshband who spread the Deen Jai, no? Okay? So it wasn't these great generals, you know, who some of us think are, uh, that, that is totally the same mentality as the Kafir mentality of hating, of subduing, and of conquering others, okay? It's not something, uh, okay, you know the Qur'an talks about وَالصُّلْحُ khair. I said to you, I've got 12 terms from the Qur'an which are encouraging us to communicate with others. And because we are not communicating with others, as a consequence, people don't understand us or they misunderstand us. The media blows it up. Let's be honest, you know, the media is responsible. In fact, in one of those surveys, people said, 60% of them said, well, the media is 
telling us these things and we just accept them. And so our job is really to, you know, rectify this. And the only way we can do this is by communicating and doing this da'wah. Invite to your Lord with wisdom and with good admonition and with good advice, peaceful advice. Yeah, no? But do, do what? Invite them to the way of your Lord. Invite them to the Ottoman Empire, invite them to the Mughal Empire, invite them to the Seljuk Empire, invite them to Pakistani Empire. No. Yeah. I hope you can already see how unpolitical the Quran is. And it's consistent in its approach. Can you see that? Udu'u ila sabile. Who do you do dawah to? Who do you invite? <laughs> and what for? You invite them to the way of Allah. There's only one party. That is the party of Hezbollah, you know, the Quran says. And uh, in the party of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, Ula'ika humul fa'izun, Ula'ika humul ghalibun. They are the winners, they are the dominant, you know. So, another approach the Quran takes is وَتَعَوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى You know, cooperate and collaborate in matters of goodness. So whenever we see anything good, we collaborate, we partner with them. And of course, that is why we are here. You know, we work in this country and we work in those departments where there is good being done, whether it is the NHS, whether it is private sector, education. We are working there. For who? We are working there in order, we believe it is good. We are serving and we are getting money for it. Okay? al birri taqwa And um, you know, there is another very important concept the Quran gives of wilaya, okay? Friendship, okay? We are people who make friendships and not people who create hatred and mistrust. You know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to understand, you know, our responsibility of communicating with others that we are peace-loving people, okay? It's no good being peaceful. It's also important actually to talk and tell who we are. And inshallah, when we do that, you know, the results are always positive, inshallah. You know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to understand our responsibility. And, you know, I, I brought this out, this verse. Um, Let's come to a common statement, okay? You know, isn't that a dawa to, you know, let, let's, you know, let's work together. That is to the people of the book, okay? That is, you know, come together on a common state. Kalimatin sawa, okay? That we worship none but Allah, okay? We ascribe no partners to him. And none of us takes others beside God as our lords. If they turn away, say witness our devotion is to him, okay? So if, if they say no, we don't curse. You know, we don't force people, <laughs> you know, we leave to them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to appreciate, you know, this very enlightened approach of Islam, the very open approach of the Quran, very just approach of the Quran, a loving and a caring approach of our deen.